As the death toll of COVID-19 keeps rising, scientists are still uncertain about where this deadly virus came from in the first place. It's believed that it jumped from animals to humans. So far, pangolins and bats that were sold at the wet market in Wuhan in China are the most likely candidates. But the virus doesn't stay with humans. There are signs that it's also spreading to other animals. A tiger at the Bronx Zoo in New York City has tested positive for COVID-19 after developing a dry cough. A couple of lions also show signs of the infection. And there are reports in Hong Kong that dogs have tested positive without having any of the usual symptoms. Scientists say that cats are very susceptible to the virus. Many people around the world are now worried about what that means for them and their pets. And farmers also want to know how dangerous the virus could be to their livestock. Pigs, chicken and ducks at least are not likely to get infected. But what about the rest? What role do animals play in the coronavirus pandemic? Which species can get infected? Which is immune? And what's this mean for our interaction with pets and farm animals? Let's ask Professor Thomas Mettenleiter. He's a virologist and the president of the Friedrich Löffler Institute, which studies animal health and infections, which can be transmitted from animals to humans. Good to have you with us on the programme. Uh, let us start with pets. A lot of people now are wondering whether their pet could transmit the virus. What do we know about that so far? Uh, hello from Insel Reims. Uh, what we actually do know is that uh, cats can get infected experimentally and by um, uh, exposure. Um, we know very little about transmission uh, because all the instances that we've seen so far, they clearly hint to infection of the pets uh, by their owners. This is by SARS coronavirus to infected uh, owners. So the, the owner is more dangerous for the pet than vice versa. Uh, what does this mean for the interaction with, with our pets? I mean, we hear terrible stories about some owners already putting their pets down because of this. No, there's no reason for doing that at all. Uh, I mean, of course, I would stay away from my pet if I'm sick myself. And this is particularly true if I'm sick with uh, SARS coronavirus too. Uh, so I should uh, really take caution in that aspect. Uh, but on the other hand, it's still uh, very clear that this is a so-called anthropozoonosis, which means that humans are the, the, the ones that infect the animals and not in this particular case, the other way around. So what does this mean uh, for livestock? Uh, I mean, we already heard that pigs are probably not susceptible to the virus, but what about cows? And how would a farmer know that his cow, for example, is infected? We have experimental evidence that pigs, chicken and ducks are indeed not susceptible to infection. Uh, we have no experimental evidence of, of any other of the uh, of livestock and, and food producing animals. But uh, colleagues all over the world are actually testing these animals uh, as we speak. Uh, and we hope that we have more information on that in a couple of days, actually. So it, not knowing everything yet also uh, worries people, of course, certainly consumers. Uh, is there any advice you have for consumers, for example, when it comes to milk? At the moment, we have no indication that any food uh, really uh, presents a risk. Uh, for contamination or for transmission of the infection. Um, as I said before, I mean, pigs are not susceptible, chicken and ducks are not susceptible. And from what we can deduce from the previous SARS coronavirus from 2002 and 2003, I would be very surprised to see uh, that cattle are indeed in, uh, in, infected. Uh, but this is under experimental um, um, uh, examination uh, at the time as we speak. Of course, we're still all trying to learn more about this new coronavirus. Uh, Professor Mettenleiter, thank you for now. We have more questions for you, so don't go away. Uh, because first we want to look at how scientists are working to find out how the virus was transmitted to humans in the first place. When it comes to the transmission of infections from animals to humans, the global wildlife trade plays a major role. Take bats. In some parts of Africa and Asia, they're considered a delicacy but they're also a source of viruses, among them the coronavirus. One study found that a coronavirus found in bats shared 96% of its genetic material with the virus behind the current pandemic, known as SARS-CoV-2. But this particular bat virus is unlikely to have infected human cells directly. 
What is more likely is that the virus jumped to humans via another animal. One prime candidate is the pangolin. The coronavirus found in pangolins has similar surface proteins, which dock to receptors, to the virus currently infecting humans. But other animals are also potential transmitters. The search for the source of this pandemic is still in full swing. Back to Professor Mettenleiter from the Friedrich Löffler Institute on Animal Studies. What is the significance of bats carrying so many viruses and how does this knowledge help us deal with a current outbreak? So apparently bats are a very uh, good reservoir for different kinds of viruses, not only coronaviruses. Um, we actually don't know why this is the case. Uh, perhaps they can control the virus better than other species. They might have a special immune system which is um, able to control the viruses. Uh, but so far it's unclear what the basis of this reservoir function really is. But what we can state is that uh, there are frequent events that viruses actually jump towards humans uh, from the bad reservoir. Of course, we're all trying to find a solution to this crisis and uh, your infection studies uh, actually found that ferrets are a good model for humans. Why is that? I mean, ferrets are animals that are being used as a model for human respiratory infections for quite some time. Um, and apparently they are also susceptible to infection by the SARS coronavirus too. Um, they get infected, they propagate the virus, they excrete the virus, um, and they also are able to transmit to other in-contact ferrets. So what we can actually use them for is to see the influence of, for example, vaccination or medication uh, towards uh, reduction of virus replication or virus excretion or transmission. All right, and of course, SARS uh, coronavirus 2 is not the first virus to jump from animal to humans. How can we prevent this from happening in the future? I don't think we can ever completely prevent this jump from the animal uh, to, to humans. Uh, I mean, we have increasing contact with animals, the, the human population is increasing. Uh, we are uh, entering habitats that usually were prohibited before, and then we have urbanization and we have globalization. Um, I mean, what we could do is uh, to put more emphasis on discovering these uh, um, spillover events, as we call them, early, and then try to control and contain them as early as possible to avoid that they actually mm -hmm. then uh, continue to expand in something uh, as we see now. All right, Professor Mettenleiter there from the Friedrich Löffler Institute. Thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. And it's time now to turn you to your questions, uh, questions you sent us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter or via email. Our resident corona expert, D.W. Derek Williams, stands ready to provide some answers. Is it safe to dry your hands with a hot air hand dryer after washing them? Like me, initially, you probably think off the bat that a hot air hand dryer would be a good way to dry your hands during a pandemic. After all, you aren't touching anything that could be bearing germs and the air coming out is heated up, so maybe that'll damage viruses that produce at body temperature. It sounds like it makes sense, but think again. A study I found that was published a couple of years ago by U.S. researchers showed that the air blowing out of a hand dryer in a public restroom increased the circulation of microbes dramatically compared to ambient uncirculated air in the same room. And if you stop and think about that, it makes sense. After all, where did the air blasting out of the hand dryer come from? It was sucked out of ambient surrounding air filled with aerosolized droplets. And it's a public bathroom, so where are those droplets coming from? Hmm? There's still a lot of debate about this, and I really can't claim to be an expert on the topic, but I certainly don't want to go anywhere near a public restroom equipped with hot air hand dryers at the moment. What do we know about hydroxychloroquine and COVID-19? Hydroxychloroquine is a drug used to prevent and treat malaria that's currently also in testing for effectiveness against COVID-19. Now, there are anecdotal accounts of patients who took it and showed improvement, and it has so far shown some efficacy against SARS-CoV-2 in cells in the lab. But just because it has an effect in the lab doesn't mean it'll help in real clinical practice. 
A big reason there's a lot of hope surrounding the medication is that it's been proven safe to use for a very long time. The U.S. government in particular is betting big on it. They've given it what's called emergency use authorization, which means it can be given to patients that have run out of other therapeutic options. Um, drug makers are already ramping up production, but, but real evidence that it can help either cure or prevent COVID-19 is still very thin on the ground. Um, we don't know things like, for example, whether if it's taken in combination with other medications, it could potentially do more harm than good. So there are still a lot of question marks. Does drinking alcohol protect me from getting infected with the coronavirus? No. This has been one of those persistent myths since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it probably comes from the idea that some cleaning and sanitizing products based on highly concentrated alcohol, upwards of 60%, are used to disinfect surfaces or, or your hands. But SARS-CoV-2 invades your respiratory system. Trying to somehow coat your respiratory tract or lungs with 60% alcohol as though they were a computer keyboard or a door handle is a very fast way to kill yourself. The WHO warns that consuming alcohol doesn't protect you from the virus and that excessive consumption is also linked to a whole range of other health issues. Before we go, here's a reminder. There is no need to have your pet put down because of the pandemic. Also, don't abandon your pet as has happened in many parts of the world already. Animal rescue teams from Lebanon to Bolivia are picking up cats and dogs, apparently abandoned by their owners who fear their furry family members could get infected and pass on the virus. A big thank you to the rescue teams and hopefully those pets can soon find a new home.